here is the 34 week baby bump. Hi guys, today I'm here for my 34 week pregnancy update and let me just say right off the bat, it feels so good to be able to say that. We have had some preterm labor scares and just some stuff going on and contractions and, and lots of things and I just feel so thankful and grateful and happy and ecstatic to be at the 34 week mark. Like, oh, I'm so... I feel like a very big weight has been lifted off my shoulders and of course I want Aaron to cook as long as possible in there. I want him to be in the belly for another month, you know, but just to say that I'm 34 weeks pregnant just feels so good. If you followed my first pregnancy journey with my son Calvin, you know that my membranes ruptured at 32 weeks and I was in the hospital from 32 to 37 weeks when they induced me to have him. He ended up a C-section, blah, blah, blah but my water essentially broke, started leaking at 32 weeks. And the fact that we have gotten to 34 weeks without that issue, I feel so good. Like, I just can't even explain how good it feels. But the other side of that is that at 34 weeks, they stop trying to prevent you from going into labor. If I started having contractions and I was sent to labor and delivery right now, they would probably try to deliver me. I would probably end up with a C-section which I don't want, we're trying for a V-back, <laughs> but 34 weeks is both very exciting because it's a very big milestone and yet at the same time it's also a scary milestone because knowing that if I went into labor and delivery like I could realistically actually have to give birth like then and there and they wouldn't try to stop it. So both exciting and scary at the same time. This past week I have been missing my anterior placenta that I had with Calvin. <laughs> I have a, my placenta is pretty much like underneath my boobs, like the top of my uterus this time around. With my first son, it was right in front and it was it kind of served as like a buffer between baby and me and his movements were a little, you know, kind of toned down because I couldn't feel them as well as I can this time around and I miss that some days because Aaron is so active and you can feel his little feet and all his little body parts moving all over the place and sometimes to just view my belly and watch him move across it almost makes me nauseous like it's just makes me feel sick <laughs> and the fact that I have like contractions and stuff like if I'm having contractions and he's feeling them and he's moving around like I'm already uncomfortable from the contraction and then he starts moving around like a crazy little baby it's just like please stop <laughs> so this past week I've been missing that anterior placenta I kind of wish that I had it back but I'm I'm really glad that I've been able to experience it both ways though that's pretty cool to be able to compare like with Calvin how I didn't just like you couldn't just like grab Calvin's foot or see Calvin's foot like poking out like that was very rare that that ever happened but that happens on the daily with Aaron. So I did get to have a couple doctor's appointments last week and honestly those were some of the most positive appointments that I've had in a while. I felt really good leaving both of those appointments and things were just looking pretty good. I mean there was there was some stuff that was kind of iffy but some most of it was pretty good. So at my first appointment I had my biophysical profile ultrasound for Aaron and he passed everything really good like right off the bat he was practice breathing like super awesome and he was moving fine. He was being a good baby. Um, on my NST I had no contractions until like the very end I had one pretty big one and he did perfectly fine on that and everything was just looking awesome. That first appointment was super great. And then when I went to my regular OB, that was at the high risk doctor, when I went to my regular OB, um, I did learn that my uterus is measuring at 38 centimeters at my 33 week appointment. So that was kind of sucky, but Calvin honestly was measuring kind of the same. I think I was at 38 centimeters when he was when I was 30 or was it I guess 30 weeks I was at 36 centimeters or at 32 weeks I was at 38 or something so Calvin and Aaron are both kind of on the same track as far as my fundal height the actual like length or measurement the size of my uterus is always measuring ahead because I do have high fluids Oh, and that's another thing that happened at my maternal fetal medicine appointment is that my fluid levels were looking better. Yay! <laughs> 
So they were, she measured it three different times and they measured from 21 to 24 centimeters, which last time they had been measuring 25 and like 25 and a half or something, 25.3 or something. So they're slightly down, which is really cool. Even though um, I have gone back to my regular diet, I'm not on my low carb, low sugar diet that I was on before and my fluid levels have come down much better than they did when I was on that diet. So who even knows if that diet worked or did anything? <laughs> so I learned nothing from that experiment. My regular doctor did tell me that both of the hospitals that I'm able to deliver at with her uh, are capable of taking care of a baby at this age as long as there's nothing like crazy bad wrong with him any kind of issues that's like really bad I should be able to if he does have to be in the NICU or if he does need to stay a while he should be able to stay at the same hospital that I am at if we deliver at either of those hospitals that she delivers at if that makes sense I hope that makes sense pretty much she was telling me that if I deliver early he is gonna be at the same place that I am, most likely. She did still tell me that she's worried about me going into labor early, but I'm not totally sure. It didn't really occur to me until after I left the appointment if she's talking about like early, like soonish, or early, like 37 weeks versus 41, 42 weeks, you know? So I have just kind of assumed he's totally gonna to be here by 40 weeks. My goal is definitely 37. Calvin was born at 37 and he was great, good to go. I know every baby's different though, I know that. Um, but I just wanna get another three weeks in and hopefully we will be like totally smooth sailing from there. But I am hoping for a vaginal delivery this time even though Calvin was a C-section the first time. And in order to get that, I have to go into labor on my own. So it's kind of a funny situation because for the next three weeks, I am trying to keep that baby in there. I don't wanna do anything to induce anything or you know I don't want to be walking too much or moving too much or I need to keep track of my contractions and like make sure nothing is going crazy for the next three weeks but as soon as 37 weeks gets here I'm trying to get that baby out because I want to have a vaginal delivery so it's kind of a funny little situation for three weeks I'm like stay in there and then like as soon as that three week mark hits I'm like you better get out <laughs> so I really look forward to being able to try a lot of different things to try and induce labor so I really do hope that we don't go into labor before 37 weeks of course but I kind of look forward to like just experimenting with like all the random little you know like wives tales and stuff and different things that they say are supposed to bring on labor so I'm excited to start doing that kind of stuff just to see if anything actually works <laughs> once 37 weeks gets here I'm still having a lot of heaviness and pressure and just it feels really heavy down there. I know I mentioned that a lot in last week's video. That is still happening. I've also had some achy boobs, which I haven't had since the beginning. I've had sensitive nipples pretty much the entire time. Well, pretty much from second trimester, third trimester, I've had sensitive nipples. First trimester really wasn't that big of a deal. But for some reason this past few weeks, I've been having like side boob achiness. And I remember that was very distinct when I was pregnant with Calvin in the beginning. So that's kind of weird that it's like taken this long for it to start this time around, but it's definitely noticeable. I also feel like my skin has been like way more oily. I feel like I was oily in the beginning in this pregnancy, but it wasn't so bad in the middle there. And then all of a sudden the past week, like it's just sprung out of nowhere and it's like super duper oily. But our weather has been kind of weird lately. We've had some spring-like days, some winter-like days. So I wonder if maybe it's just the humidity from those spring days that's making my skin feel more oily. So I'm not totally sure if it's actually pregnancy related or not. When I was pregnant with Calvin, I had oily skin like, crazy like so oily the whole freaking pregnancy and it was crazy because I usually do have oily skin but it was like super intense when I was pregnant with him. I think that hunger is bringing on contractions. I have noticed that like mid-morning or sometimes mid-afternoon I have like an hour or so where I'm having more contractions than the rest of the day. And that Procardia pill that I'm on has been totally helping with the contractions. They are at least half of what they used to be so that's awesome. But I do feel like sometimes having an empty stomach is influencing my contractions. So that's kind of weird. I try to keep up on snacking and try to keep my belly at least kind of full um, at pretty much all times just to avoid that. And I honestly, I know it sounds weird, but I honestly think that there's a correlation there. Just for some random stuff, my husband got 
Erin's little name sign finished. Um, it's kind of the same style that Calvin's name sign was. Maybe I'll insert a picture or something here. Um, I just feel like that was like the final touch to the nursery. Like I feel like we're ready now. <laughs> like it just feels like it has completed something having that name sign done with Calvin his name sign was done like weeks ago <laughs> so uh, it's kind of it, it's kind of been put off a little bit but I kept bugging Justin about it and he eventually put it together <laughs> I also wanted to say that I've been missing walks lately like I mentioned earlier it's been kind of nice out some days have been really nice this past week and it feels like springtime and it just feels like a good day to go for a walk and I just want to go for a walk but I have been told to limit my walking per my doctor so I technically shouldn't be going for walks and I haven't gone for any walks but I just kind of miss that that little experience just that one little common everyday thing I just like wish that I could go do <laughs> but when we get to 37 weeks I'll be walking all the time so that's pretty much it for this week's update it's a little bit longer than usual I just feel very talkative today I guess <laughs> the blog post is a little longer than usual if you guys are ever interested in seeing the blog posts sometimes they have more information than I talk about here in the videos they're always linked down below um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what other kind of mommy stuff you want to see on this channel. Let me know how far along you guys are in your pregnancies and how things are going with you guys. And I will talk to you next time.